Hello and welcome to Out and About. I'm Diane Gonzalez. A little later in the show, we'll be telling you about the sixth annual Amazing Chase to benefit St. Monica's. And we'll have a special guest from the Women's Professional Rodeo. But we're going to start today with our friend Jeff Mall from the Convention and Visitors Bureau. Fall is here, most exciting time of the year to be in Lincoln. There is a definite buzz in downtown Lincoln and community wide right now about uh, Husker football. I think that's it's here. it. That's it. We're taping this the day before the Husker home opener, and uh, I hear that it's National Wear Your School Colors Day. Mm hmm. So and yeah, wear, wear your red day too. This is, uh, well, for me it's Wildcat <laughs> Purple, but you know, this whole Big 12 thing, Big right. 12, Big 10. I don't have to make an exception now for rooting for the Huskers. I can you root for the Huskers every game and not have to make any exceptions for that Wildcat and game. And you can so. still have your Wildcat pride whenever you want, and nobody's really going to give you a hard time anymore. Now, some people who even don't even have tickets, they come downtown to just goof off and sh soak in the atmosphere. Yeah, it's just an amazing experience. And with the Big Ten season upon us, we are getting so many inquiries from across the country of people from Big Ten communities that want to come into Lincoln, not just for the Friday and Saturday of game day, but want to come in as early as Tuesday and Wednesday, see the Capitol, see the museums and the attractions. So there's a definite new excitement uh, for the football season ahead. Yeah, this first year in the Big Ten is going to be very, very interesting. It's going to be so. fun. All right. It's also time for Lincoln Stars hockey. Their season opener is coming up. That's right. I think they've got the ice box all ready to go for some hockey, and they kick things off on September 30th with a match against the Sioux Falls Stampede. Sioux Falls has been somebody that has played Lincoln very tough over the years, and uh, just a great atmosphere at the ice box, a great way to start the weekend on a Friday night or head out on a Saturday over at the, down at the old state fairgrounds, which is now Innovation Campus. Can you believe this is, I think, their 15th year it's of amazing. Stars Hockey? It's amazing. It's amazing. We were there from day one, my family and I, and uh, have missed quite a few games since then, but the energy is just amazing. Still going strong. The Lincoln Arts Festival has become another fall tradition. The Lincoln Arts Council brings about 100 artists in from all over the country down at South Point, and this is always just a, a really fun event. Right, this is the 11th year um, that the Lincoln Arts Festival is putting this event on, and uh, a lot of fabulous works of local artists. I believe they have over 100 artists from across the country featured this year, local artists, and it's just an amazing exhibit of art, live music, and food, as well as fun at South Point. All right, another big event that people mark their calendars for every year is the big library book sale. Yes. I hear this gets pretty wild. Um, there is a preview party the night of the opening that you need tickets for, but other than that, just go in and shop to your heart's content. Yeah, you can pretty much set aside your books for the rest of the year at the, the book sale that they feature, and a uh, good opportunity to pick up some uh, titles that maybe you've had an eye on for a while. That's right. Make, gotta make room for those new books. I know. All right. Now that is at the Event Center. There's also another couple of events at the Event Center we want to talk about. The Modern and Black Powder Gun Show. You going to the gun show? Well, you know, I, I'm not that interested in guns, but it says they have historic clothing right. and reproduction items. That sounds pretty interesting. It is fun. A lot of people will be, some of them will be in attire. You can purchase historic clothing, uh, a lot of vendor-related uh, gun items, selling guns. Uh, very much a family-friendly show, so we don't want to scare people out there and realize that a gun show is just for adults. There's just a lot of things there as far as education, inspection, and you can actually bring your gun out there before the hunting season to have it inspected. Make sure it's not loaded. Right. Absolutely. And the antique show is coming up um, in October. Ten different states, 68 vendors. Glassware, books, pottery. Uh, you know, an antique show is amazing. You find a lot of things that maybe you realized you had at home at one time or your grandparents had it up on the... Um, the hutch or whatever it was, so it's just a lot of fun out there, Lancaster. All right, the Lincoln Rose Show is coming up out at Southeast Community College. Many shrubs, hybrids, various arrangements will be featured. This is a national competition, so if you've got some flowers that you think uh, would fit perfectly into the Lincoln Rose Show, this is a good opportunity to go do it. Southeast Community College, located on 84th and O, uh, should be plenty of space out there and lots of different kinds of beautiful roses. But that'll smell good. Oh, it will be very nice. <laughs> Watch out for the allergies. <laughs> and the thorns. <laughs> yes. Now, our friend Tom Lorenz, I think he's still recovering from, uh, from uh, the uh, rib fest mm -hmm. and zombie fest. So, but we do want to plug uh, three of the events he has coming up in October. Disney Live is coming up October 14th. Quilt Festival, the 20th through the 22nd. And the Pretty Lights Tour, October 27th. So make sure you get your tickets for those events at Pershing, and hopefully we'll have Tom back here next month to tell us a little more about those. Now the LIDA also has a couple of, of fun things coming up. We have to practice our pronunciation for, for these events. Palabolus. Palabolus, excellent. <laughs> Buckle your seatbelts. This is an athletic, wild, awe-inspiring, zany production 
um, that's going to be at the lead center. It's wildly creative and physically daring dancers who leap, fly, intertwine, and break all the rules of dance. And the New York Times has been giving this amazing reviews. So I know there's still tickets available, and I would encourage people to get over to the lead center for that event. All right, and we've got some uh, drummers coming in. Yamato, this is called. Um, some of Jap Japan's best percussionists coming in for this. We talked about the attire at the gun show, but the attire that will be there for this event is going to be amazing. They'll have their traditional dress on, a lot of great drummers, an invigorating experience that will leave your heart pounding. And don't forget, when you go to the Lead Center, there's a lot of great restaurants in downtown Lincoln to uh, hit before the event or maybe even after. And very convenient parking. Very convenient. First hour free. All right, Lincoln Symphony Orchestra also is at its new home in the Lead Center. And last month we mentioned the first show of the season, Cirque de la Symphonie. September 16th, but there's also the Four Seasons coming up in October. Yeah, this is a blend of uh, the works of uh, Chiara, the Chiara String Quartet, as well as Rachel Barton Pine on violin. And they bring together the tango-inspired Four Seasons of Buenos Aires. And of course, the concert will not be complete uh, without the work of Rachel Barton Pine on piano, or violin, excuse me. Um, just a great combination of, uh, of musical talent there from the Lincoln Symphony Orchestra. Now remember this year, all tickets for the symphony are 10 and $25, $5 for kids, the mm -hmm. 2030 Club, no dress code. Let's make it a big season for the, for the Lincoln Symphony. Rococo's got a, a singer-songwriter duo coming in. If you've marked your calendar for anything on the Rococo Theater schedule, this would be the one event to go see, an evening with Jillian Welch. Uh, an American-born singer-songwriter performs with her partner, David Rawling. They actually just released a, a musical compilation called The Harrow and the Harvest, and it's a great blend of southern sound between the two of them. And uh, I enjoy the Rococo Theater very much because there's so much history over there. It's a great place to hear acoustic music, and uh, this should be a perfect setting for this night. All right, lots of great theater as usual in the community. Last month we mentioned West Side Story. That is coming up September in September at the Community Playhouse. I should mention Lynn, who's running camera here, is going to do percussion for that show. Wow. So you have to go now. I'm very, I'm impressed. <laughs> Multi-talented staff great. we have here at Channel 5. <laughs> uh, another great show coming up at Wesleyan. And we also have Joseph and the Amazing Color Dreamcoat. Comes to the Nebraska Wesleyan stage. This, of course, is Andrew Lloyd Webber's musical, and uh, this is coming there. This is the story based on the story of Joseph, who found uh, was found in the book of Genesis at the McDonald Theater at Nebraska Wesleyan. Okay, and a very historic play, a very controversial when it was when it first opened. A Doll's House is going to be uh, coming to the Haymarket. And this premiered at the Royal Theater in Copenhagen in Denmark itself in 1879. So there is a lot of history. Very controversial. It talks a lot about the women's rights movement. And uh, it's a three-act play, and uh, should be a lot of fun over at the Haymarket Theater. All right. Cla another classic, Othello, coming to the Community Playhouse. This is Flatwater's first ever production of the play, the Flatwater Shakespeare Company. And uh, this is the most intimate tragedy of uh, bravely confrontation. Um, a story of identity, racism, love, jealousy, loyalty, betrayal. I'm sure there's a lot of other stuff intertwined in there as well. And it's important to support the Flatwater this year. They, they're kind of homeless as mm -hmm. their, their right. quarters at Wyuka are being renovated. So uh, Playhouse is, is hosting them for Othello. So uh, a couple great shows going on out at the Playhouse. You bet. Now there is a new um, permanent display coming up at Morrill Hall we want, we want to let people know about. Spectacular portraits of Native American youth in a traditional regalia by award-winning Nebraska photographer Don Dahl. It's called First Peoples of the Plains, Traditions Shaped by Land and Sky. This will be in the newly renovated exhibit gallery at Morrill Hall. We're very excited to get that thing up and running. I know every time my kids are at Morrill Hall, they're always wanting to know what's going to happen on the third floor and happen in the new gallery. So there's some new energy over there. And uh, Native American uh, art is, is amazing, and it, it represents a true uh, culture in our society. All right. And now for something completely different, we have something new. Downtown Lincoln Association is launching its gift card program. Uh, the Chambers had a program, Shop Lincoln, for, for a few years, and now DLA has one specific for downtown. Yeah, what's neat about what DLA and both the Chamber and DLA are doing, the Downtown Lincoln Association launched this on September 1st. It's a gift card program um, that you can go to the DLA office uh, down at 206 South 13th Street at Suite 101, purchase a gift card, and that gift card in the denomination that you choose can be used at any one of the great downtown outlets, retail outlets. And currently they have over 150 downtown Lincoln businesses that are featured. It's a great way to give back to what 
I feel is probably one of our main shopping districts in the downtown area and a place that's really been invigori invigorated um, over the years by Terry Uland and his staff. But also what the chamber is doing with the Shop Lincoln program. Uh, and how many places of business are included in that chamber one? The chamber one is over 1,500 chamber members community wide, some of which are in downtown Lincoln, but uh, they're spread out across the community. Both of these programs, between the 1,500 that the chamber has and the 150 that DLA is doing, is a huge promotion and a huge push to keep our dollars local and promote local business, um, give back to local business as much as you can. And you know, I really challenge people um, to take advantage of either one of these programs because it's perfect gift for birthdays, for incentives for employees, um, mm -hmm. for Christmas gifts. Um, and I think a lot of people take to their heart that uh, this is our time to give back. All right. So if you don't know what people's favorite restaurant is here in Lincoln, get them one of these cards and you then bet. they can pick. You bet. All right. Thank you, Jeff. And uh, we want to let people know that they can find out about all the great events going on in Lincoln at the, at the, at the Convention of Visitors, <laughs> Visitors Bureau website, <laughs> Lincoln.org. Give Jeff a call, 434-5348. He's always fun to talk to. Can't wait to talk to people and help them plan a great weekend. All right. Thank you, Jeff. It's time once again for Lincoln's Amazing Chase to benefit St. Monica's. We'll have details on that right after this break. Hi, this is Ryan with LES's Save Money, Saving Energy. Did you know that for every degree you set your thermostat below 68 in the winter, you can save 3 to 5% in energy savings? 3 to 5%. So the question is, how low can you go? How low can you I'm okay. <clears throat> so visit us at les.com or do a search for LES Video Vault on YouTube for even more money and energy saving tips. Until next time, thanks for watching. Welcome back to Out and About. It's part scavenger hunt, part obstacle course. The sixth annual Amazing Chase is coming up October 15th. It's time for the teams to get ready. The event is a fundraiser for St. Monica's with emphasis on the word fun. And two guests join me from that great organization. Mary Berry Magsman is the executive director and Becky Roberts is the development director. Thank you both very much for being here. We're glad to be here. Let's start with the cause itself. This is a fundraiser for St. Monica's. Uh, Mary, tell us what about St. Monica's and the services provided there. We are a behavioral health organization, so we're providing substance abuse and mental health treatment for women, and that's really what makes us unique, is that we're only serving women, and so in the course of the past 47 years, um, we've developed very specific services for women, and that includes their children. So we're also serving women who are pregnant or have very young children, and they're actually living with us while mom goes through treatment. And how many, um facilities do you have? We actually have six residential programs scattered throughout the community. And how many women do you serve every year? Usually around 400, a little under four, a little over, a little under depending on the year and depending on funding. So, But depending on how many children they have, you touch a lot more lives exactly. than, than 400. A lot more lives and what we're hoping is that we're also touching a generational issue so that the children of these moms um, hopefully don't end down that same path and develop a substance abuse problem. So, It's a great cause, it's a great organization, but one of the or challenges organizations like you face is, is fundraising, and that's where the amazing chase comes in. Um, Becky, tell us about the chase. Okay, well we will have on Saturday, October 15th, we are going to send uh, hopefully 30 teams of four members each all over the city. They have no idea where they're going to be going or what they're going to be doing, but they will be um, getting clues to various locations throughout the city, locally owned businesses or local landmarks. And once they get to the location, they're going to have to do some weird, strange feat until they get the clue to the next location. We're looking at some video from um, past Amazing Chases. It looks like a bunch of crazy people running all over town <laughs> creating havoc here. That's exactly what it is. <laughs> <laughs> but very fun crazy people. Very fun. Now, I understand that part of this is that each team has to sort of label four of their people, the brain, the brawn, the beauty, and the belly. Mm -hmm. How does that all fit into the competition? <laughs> well, out of usually about eight challenges, four of them are an individual challenge. So before the race starts, each team member has to pick which of those they want to be. The brain being some kind of mental challenge, the belly being you're going to have to eat a large amount of something. <laughs> oh dear. <laughs> um, beauty has usually something to do with an artistic twist and that could be lots of different things. 
Um, and then what did I miss? Brawn. The brawn is obviously more physical. All right. And so they, they have to decide that before the race starts. So they have no idea what, what's coming, but each of them choose which of those particular tasks they're going to try. So. <laughs> this looks like fun. <laughs> um, now, one of the reasons the, team d the teams do this, of course, is to raise money for St. Monica's, but they also have amazing prizes. That's true. Yeah, we do. Yeah. To talk about sure. that. Sure. Um, our grand prize, we'll have uh, prizes for the top three fundraisers of the teams who participate in the chase, and also for the top three teams in the competition itself. And so this year, the grand prize for the top competitors is a week for four in the Dominican Republic. So, and we include a travel stipend for that, and it's a beautiful condo that has been donated by one of our supporters. And it's near a dolphin preserve, so you can go swim and play with the dolphins and take some day trips. And uh, there are quite a few swimming pools, and it's Oceanside. And it's oh, like sign me up. Yes. Exactly. No wonder they, they look like they're so into yes. it there. They're trying to win the Good prize. Good motivation, yeah. Now, the fundraising comes from the teams. Um, they pay an entry fee, and then they also try to raise money before the event. How does that work? Well, it's actually really fun because we've gotten... Um, an electronic system where they actually create a donor page, send that out to friends and family, post it on Facebook. Depending on how savvy you are, folks really get creative with it, but it makes it really easy. They send it out to friends and family, say, I'm trying to raise this much money, please donate. They get online, their friends and family donate, and they watch their little meter rise to meet their goal. And of course, the fun part then is, um, their start time is based on how much money they've raised as a team. Okay, so, so they can get a head start exactly, if they raise a lot of money. Exactly. Very clever. Mm -hmm. Now, if someone's not on a team, um, how can they participate? Yeah. By donating to their friends and... Exactly. Yeah, absolutely. So you can go to www.stmonicas.com and there are there is a main page for The Amazing Chase and they can select any, if they know somebody who's on a team, they can look for somebody by individual or by team name, and it's very simple. It takes a couple of minutes to do it online, or if you prefer, you can always send a check or drop cash by St. Monica's. All right, and you have some good sponsors helping you out with this? We do. We have some great local companies that have been there for us year after year. Lincoln Industries, Cornhusker Bank, Union Bank, um, there's a long list. Yeah. 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 All right. Now, I understand this is quite a team building exercise. Some companies will have a team do it to, to build that team spirit in their group. Exactly. It looks like it would be something where you all have to work together. Yeah. It yeah. is. And we had a, a kickoff one morning recently for the teams, and we had one of the teams talk who has done it year after year. And one of them said, um, you will probably not like your coworkers during the chase at all because you are so frustrated and you're trying to hurry and people aren't doing things the way you want them to. But by the end of it, she said you, you're bonded in a different way than you've ever been before. So Very I cool. think they really like it, yeah. Now the details of the exact challenges are big, deep, dark secret, but <laughs> um, apparently this, this uh, whole concept has a message to the road to recovery, never a straight line. Exactly. You know that we that if you're in recovery, those of you that have been in that road or or family and friends, it isn't simple and it isn't easy, and you certainly have challenges along the way, and including relapse. Um, but it's worth the journey, and that you have to just keep forging ahead, even when it seems hard, even when you feel like you're not going to be able to get through that challenge. You kind of push through. So it's a really nice analogy to the actual chase, because again, you might not think you can finish that cord of something <laughs> but you forge ahead and you make it and uh, and it's great that you have supporters along the way right. just like in recovery what's your fundraising goal for this event this year okay well last year we raised just barely shy of sixty thousand dollars which i think is amazing for a very small community-based event and so we upped the ante this year and our goal is sixty five thousand dollars and our chasers and uh, supporters are already at 28% of that goal, and we've still got six weeks to go. So All right. Yeah. How many teams have signed up? We have 27 right now. 27. Mm -hmm. So people need to. If uh, anybody wants to get in, we do still left. have a yeah. few slots left. Yeah. All right. Well, let's people let people know that they can uh, find out more about the amazing chase. Um, which is coming up October 15th all over Lincoln by going to stmonicas.com. Also, if you'd like to call, their number is 402-441-3768. And uh, it looks like just a great event that really it benefits the entire community. 
It really does. One of the things that we have, that really has evolved, I don't know that we were thinking in that way when we started it, but it has really helped us um, highlight this community, what a great community it is. So it, you know, you might find yourself at a city park you didn't know existed, or a business a, that you didn't know about that you're now a fan of, or, or not, depending on what you had to eat there. But, <laughs> <laughs> but it really does highlight our community, you know, all of the wonderful companies that participate. So it's, it's really more than just St. Monica's. Um, it's really a community event. All right, again, stmonicas.com is the place to go find out more information. Thank you all very much. Hope you have a beautiful weather that day. We do too. And if, you, if we see any crazy people out running You'll know around why. on October 15th. They will have matching t-shirts, so it's not hard to miss. <laughs> all right, yeah. thank you both. Yeah, thank you. Thanks, Diane. Women's Professional Rodeo is coming to Lincoln in October, and we'll be back to tell you all about that when Out and About continues. I thought of myself as a functioning addict. Every day was the same. You wake up, you get high, you get your kids dressed. St. Monica's taught me to be a parent. They helped me to figure out who I was. Having my kids in here with me and going through treatment with me, I was able to be a mom. They gave me that hope until I had hope for myself. I had to do the work, but they guided me. St. Monica's puts families back together. Welcome back to Out and About. Greener Pastures is the theme for the Women's Professional Rodeo World Finals coming up October 13th through the 16th at the Lancaster Event Center. And joining me is Summer Gangenbach. She is the Women's Professional Rodeo Trade Show Manager. Thank you very much for being with us oh, today. Thank you for having us. Now you uh, live in Raymond right mm -hmm. now and you are a rodeo competitor yourself. I am. I so am. what will you be doing in this show? I'll be running barrels at the finals this year along with uh, helping coordinate the trade show. Sounds like fun. It well, tell, tell us about the Women's Professional Rodeo Association. Well, we're the oldest women's professional sporting association in the United States. We were started in 1948, um, and we're also the only association that's run by an all-women board that's elected. Um, we compete in sanctioned rodeos all over the United States, and our finals are here in Lincoln. This is the second year that they've been pulled out of Oklahoma and Texas, and um, we've had a great turnout last year. And so this year we're hoping to have just as good or better. All right. Um, you also, the, the uh, Women's Professional Rodeo Association has a program for juniors. We do, we do. You have to be 17 years and younger to be in the junior program. Um, it's really a way that the WPRA wants to help the next generation of rodeo stars uh, get their start. And how long have you been doing rodeo comp comp competition? I've been rodeoing for a while. I think a lot of us start out when we're pretty young. Mm -hmm. um, I've just started running professionally with the WPRA last year. All right, pretty exciting. Now I understand the WPRA also has its own television show. We do. Have it's you on, ever been on? No. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think so. <laughs> it's, been, it's on RFD TV um, and it's great. They replay a lot of the really good rodeos out there. We interview a lot of the girls that are kind of the current trainers and the stars of barrel racing and roping. All right, we should mention that here in Lincoln, that would be Time Warner Cable Channel 229 and High Def 1229 uh, for RFD mm -hmm. and the uh, Women's Pro Rodeo today. <laughs> well, how many will compete in Lincoln and where are they coming from? Last year we had over 1,100 entries wow. in the finals. Um, we had a 120% increase in contestants. Um, there we have both local open races and open ropings. So we do have some community centered events. Um, and then we have women that come from all over the United States. And we also had Canada and Australia represented last year. Excellent international mm -hmm. event then. And, and how have things worked out having these finals in Lincoln? It's been fantastic. The Lancaster Event Center um, is a wonderful facility, especially if you have a horse event. Um, they hosted us very well. Uh, we had a huge turnout. I think being in the central in the country has been great. We've opened the door for a lot of other girls to travel. As everybody knows fuel costs are expensive, and mm -hmm. so when you're right in the middle, you just allow for more people to attend. All right. What kind of prize money is at stake for the competitors? There's over eighty thousand dollars this year that is split between all the different events. So it's a it's a good drive to get everybody to come in and compete. All right. Um, let's talk a little bit about the schedule then. It runs Thursday through Sunday mm -hmm. with events um, the entire uh, four days of the of the rodeo. Again, um, www.wpra is a website where you can go to find out more information. But Saturday is really the big day. It is. Um, it kicks off at 11 o'clock. We're having a spaghetti luncheon. Um, our fundraiser 
that we're raising money for this year is for Making Strides. Um, their event is actually the weekend after our final, so it's a good kind of push to get everybody out uh, for them. We'll also have an auction during that time and um, that is open to the community. We'd like to see a lot of people come out. I know that breast cancer awareness is something that touches just about everybody's lives. Um, being an all-women's sporting association, I think it was an, an easy partnership. Uh, we'll also have a horse sale that day. It'll be our second annual horse sale, and that night will be our rodeo. So it sounds like a lot of fun. Now, what will people, for people who maybe have never seen a rodeo or just seen one mm -hmm. in, on TV, what can they expect when they come out to the event center for this? Well, women's rodeo is a little different. Um, we're all timed events. So we have um, calf roping. We have breakaway roping, tie-down roping. There'll be the junior finals barrel racer will be crowned during the rodeo. We also have mutton busting this year, which is going to be a lot of fun. It's um, the finals uh, for these group of kids that have done mutton busting, which is sheep riding, um, all over uh, Kansas, Oklahoma, Nebraska, and South Dakota. So it'll be a lot of fun to come watch. Now, I know that you're married to a veterinarian. I am. Do you have veterinarians there um, at will. the rodeo to take care of the yes, animals? Yes, and, and truly the horses. I mean, we're the athletes, but the horses are, and the animals there are the number one priority. There's an on-staff veterinarian, farrier. There's people there that work on the animals throughout the weekend. Um, they're like any athlete. They deal with a lot of different issues. They have to stay fit nutritionally, and um, the girls take really good care of their horses. All right, again, the Women's Professional Rodeo World Finals, Greener Pastures, October 13th through the 16th at the Lancaster Event Center. We forgot to mention, this is all free. That's right. Excellent, except probably the rodeo, for the spaghetti. Well, yeah, you have to pay for the spaghetti. <laughs> That's for the fundraiser. The rodeo is a $7 ticketed event. Okay. $2 from each ticket goes to Making Stride. So again, it's really, we're just trying to do some community fundraising. All right, again, uh, if you'd like more information about Women's Professional Rodeo and about the event here in Lincoln, WPRA.com. And the phone number is 719-447-4627. Summer, thank you very much for being thank here. You and good me. luck. I yes. hope you take home some of that prize money. <laughs> me too. All right. <laughs> That's all for today's show. I want to thank all our guests today. And thank you for watching. We hope to see you out and about.